Hello everyone, welcome to Sarat Chandra Ice Academy. So today in this particular uh, session, we'll be covering weekly current affairs of topic international relations from 25th December to 31st December of 2022. So in this particular video, the, these are the topics which will be covered. We'll be covering India-Maldives bilateral relations, India-Nepal relations, and some mains uh, previous year questions and mains practice questions. So uh, first of all, we'll start with India Maldives. So uh, the context is recently there was a bilateral meeting where it was said that India must strengthen ties with the Maldives without taking sides in the domestic politics given the political turmoil the Maldives is experiencing. Now what has happened here is the former Maldivian president Abdullah Yaman has been convicted by a Maldivian criminal court. So as op opposition leader he was opposition leader. He has spearheaded the India out campaign. India out campaign. So it means it's not supporting India. I mean, has been alleged of having close links with China. So here the thing is about India, Maldives, and the China axis. The opposition leader is supporting China, and we all know the relationship between India and China in today's times. Now, how are these developments relevant to India? Now, he's trying to link his uh, incarceration to pressure from India. And India also needs to tread carefully regarding the domestic politics of Maldives. Now, the thing is, there is a domestic politics or political turmoil which is happening in Maldives. There are two parties. One party is supporting India and the opposition party is not supporting India. Now, coming to some historical background, we should also know that the Maldives became a democracy in 2008. So it's very recent that Maldives has become a democratic country. Fine. Now, coming to how have India's relations with Maldives, like what, what, what kind of relations it at presently India and Maldives have? First of all, there is a security partnership. In security partnership, recently the National College for Policing and Law Enforcement was inaugurated by India's External Affairs Minister. So there is one kind of a security partnership when they are collaborating on a policing and law enforcement. Now coming to economic cooperation, tourism is the mainstay. We all know uh, Maldives is very is a very famous tourist place. Now many many uh, uh, people from India, uh, it's a very major uh, destination for them. Now in August 2021, the Indian company called Afcons it signed a contract for the largest ever infrastructure project in Maldives, which is the Greater Malay Connectivity Project. Now it is a 500 million project funded by India. Okay. Now. India is also Maldives' second largest trading partner, rising from its fourth position in 2018. So it is one of the uh, like uh, trading partner. Indian and uh, Maldives have uh, a good trade relationship. <clears throat> in 2021, bilateral trade registered a growth of 31% over the previous year, overcoming the pandemic-related challenges. So these are the points you can write from an economic point of view. So these, these points are basically important for your main answer writing. So in main answer writing, in main answer writing, you can put these points. Now coming to the cultural connect. Now in cultural connect, we can also write one point: the origin of Divehi. It's a, it's a Maldivian language. Now it is said that the origin of this language goes back to Sanskrit and Pali, which are nothing but Indian origin, which are also the roots of many other South Indian languages. Moreover, Maldivians have a long traded with India, listening to Hindi music and also studied in India. Now, the thing is, when the main answer is writing, you should write from different dimension to give it a multi-dimensional approach. So it should be multi-dimensional. So here you are writing about culture, you are writing about economy, you are also writing about security partnership. Now, one more uh, point you can write, it is also a historical point, like it's not uh, very new, but still then it can be used for answer enrichment. There are something called Operation Cactus. 
it's a very important operation it was indian army's operation now indian army's operation cactus spoiled the cop in maldives that was attempted by a pro elam group in 1988 this happened in 1988 india maintains a naval presence in maldives at the request of the maldives since 2009 president yemen in an interview said that if the indian army had not come to our rescue we would have lost independence during the last 50 years so indian army rescued so there was a coup attempt in maldives so this operation by indian army uh, was done in order to uh, restore the government indian coast guard dornier was the first to land at the ibrahim nasir airport with relief and supplies after the tsunami of december 26 2004 Even one more important point, even right, Maldives has pledged its support to India as a permanent member in the United Nations Security Council. Now, coming to the challenges, so there are a lot of challenges when it comes to the relationship between India and Maldives. Now, first point is the political instability. now india's primary concern has been the impact of political instability in the neighborhood on its security and development the february 2015 arrest of maldives opposition leader mohammad nasheed on terrorism charges and the consequent political crisis have posed a real diplomatic test for the india's neighborhood policy so the thing is india is always concerned about the political instability which is happening in maldives since some years second point is the radicalization point in the past decade or so the number of maldivians drawn towards terrorist groups like the isis and pakistan based jihadist groups have been also increasing so it means in maldives the radicalization of uh, students or uh, the youth is increasing now the third point is very common is the china angle so china angle you can very clearly write uh, uh, key Uh, recently one point you can write the opposition party is supporting china the opposition party of maldives is supporting china which we have already discussed now china's footprint in india's neighborhood has also increased for example maldives has emerged as an important pearl in the china's string of pearls in the indian ocean that point also we can write here and the fourth point is the anti india sentiments here you can clearly write the india out campaign made by the opposition leader it has been very effective in coordinating between different sources like political party social media media and china everything so the anti anti indian sentiments are very increasing in recent times now you can see here some previous year mains um, question which have been asked in 2013 there was a question what do you understand by the string of pearls how does it impact india briefly outline the steps taken by india to counter this so this point you have to write about what is the string of pearls how uh, like about china you have to write how does it impact india because uh, uh, it is surrounded by china it, it is a kind of uh, china's hegemony in uh, uh, south asia area now what india has taken to counter so all these things you have to write now discuss the political developments in maldives in the last 2 years should there be any cause for concern to india now one question which i have prepared here is which you can try india maldives relationship have been blessed by the depths of the ocean elucidate so this uh, question you can just uh, try to write and in our next session i uh, will be giving you the uh, correct model answer for this question okay fine now coming to the next topic which are the news is india nepal relations now why it was a news because recently pushpa kamar dahal prasanna has won in as nepal's new prime minister very recent december 28 or 29 news now here we need to know what are the areas of cooperation where india and nepal cooperate so similarly we have to make it a multi dimensional answer so here first of all we have to write about trade and economy in trade and economy you can simply write ki india remains nepal's largest trade partner for so nepal's largest trade partner is india third point in defense it's a very famous military exercise is there which is known as the surya kiran military exercise since 2011 
Now it is it is a kind of military exercise conducted by both countries on a biannual events. Like it is done simultaneously, and one year if it is India, the next year, after two years it will be Nepal. Now one more point: the Gorkha regiments of Indian Army, which is a very uh, famous regiment of Indian Army, they are partly recruited from the hill districts of Nepal. Now in 1995, India had in principle accepted the request of the government of Nepal to assist the Nepalese army in its modernization and reorganization. So it means. Uh, india is assisting india is assisting nepal in the modernization and reorganization of its army third point is the connectivity see nepal is a landlocked country surrounded by india from three sides and one side is open towards tibet which has very limited vehicular access so most of the access is with india india is looking to develop the inland waterways for the movement of cargo within the framework of trade and transit arrangements, providing additional access to sea for Nepal, calling it linking Sagarmatha, that is the Mount Everest, and Sagar, that is Indian Ocean. So uh, these uh, three points uh, are one of the important points of cooperation. We'll go for some extra points like the culture point. Now coming to the important point is the socio-cultural aspect. Now socio-cultural aspect, it can be asked only through a means question which i have already mentioned in the next slide we'll go through that first of all you should write the socio-cultural connectivity between india and nepal here the social religion culture language everything will uh, come into play so both share a special closeness and similarity in cultural tradition first of all lord buddha now lord buddha was born in nepal so this point you can write as a Buddhism connect. So we have a Buddhism connect. Now we also have a Hinduism connect. Sita, the daughter of Nepal, who was married to Ram, the crown prince of Ayodhya in India, has made a special place in the hearts of Hindus living anywhere in the world. So this point you can write it as a Hinduism connect. Okay. Now third point large number of people from both countries visiting each other's countries for a pilgrimage thousands of nepalese visit pilgrimage sites every year to india for example there are the four dhams we, we have the four dhams in india right one is badrinath or kedarnath in uttarakhand jagannath temple puri in Odisha, rameshwaram in tamil nadu and dwarka in gujarat they are considered sacred site by nepalese so nepalese people come to visit our four dhams now, so on one side we write, the Nepalese people come to visit India, so we should also write, Indian people also visit Nepal. So, in the next point, Nepal's must visit religious destinations for Indian nationals. Pashupati Nath in Kathmandu, Lumbini, the birthplace of Buddha in Rupandhi district, Ram Janaki temple in Janakpur. It is the birthplace of Janak and Sita. These are all must visit religious destinations for Indian nationals. Now also cinemas and music also play a very uh, connectivity part between India and Nepal. Indian movies are very popular. Indian movies also get released in Nepal. And so is Indian music. Similarly, Nepali cinemas and music are very popular in India, especially in places with concentration of the people of Nepal. Origin mainly in North and Northeast India. It is very popular now one more aspect in such socio cultural is the language factor now here also another component or component of Nepal, india nepal cultural affinity common languages like nepali maithili bhojpuri hindi avadi these are all very common languages which are spoken in both india and nepal sanskrit is the root of many of these languages which is regarded as the language of the gods and saints. Now, India and Nepal both use Devanagari script. This is also a connectivity point you can write. Devanagari, Devanagari script in writing Nepali, Hindi and many other common languages. Many religious te texts like the Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, Tripitakas are all written in this script. So this script also plays a connectivity part between India and Nepal. Now one main question for practice which um, you can try uh, religion 
and language is perhaps the most important factor and plays a predominant role in shaping the cultural relations between india and nepal try to write this in 150 words so the points you already have we have we have to keep we have to uh, give more stress towards the religion which we have already discussed in our previous slide the language which we have already discussed so this so club this points and write it and the, in our next session i'll be explaining this answer uh, with the model answer i'll be giving all the points so you can just try writing okay fine next now another component apart from socio cultural is the multilateral partnership if you see there are so many organizations where india and nepal are both member of that particular uh, organizations for example bbin in bbin that is bangladesh bhutan india nepal so bbin both indian um, nepal are there bimstech very important nowadays it's very uh, relevant in today's time also Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation. Both India is a member and also Nepal is a member. There are other countries like Bangladesh, Thailand. They all are member. Non-alignment movement that is started from 1961 from the Belgrade Conference. So both India and uh, Nepal are also a part of non-alignment movement when they both uh, uh, decided that they will not be a part of any particular power bloc that is. Uh, Russia, you know, USSR at that point of time, and also U USA. So they decided to be uh, not to be aligned to both these power blocks. SARC, SARC is always in news. So India and Nepal are both part of SARC also. So now these all are important for prelims point of view. You have to cover all these organizations from the IR topic in a very detailed manner. I'm using the word detailed manner because. very in depth questions uh, like uh, one liners i'm not talking about uh, like uh, on a very depth manner but at least one liners you can remember like any particular kind of framework recently what happened in particular kind of declaration all these things usually they ask in prelims now coming to challenges so in mains this is required one challenge is the territorial dispute recently the kalapani boundary issue was there i'll explain this issue also issues with the 1950 peace and friendship treaty so in 1950 there was a treaty between both the countries that is called as the peace and friendship treaty now what happened is the 1950 treaty of peace and friendship was sought by the nepalese authorities in 1949 to continue the special links they had with british india and to provide them an open border and right to work in india so that was the main objective of friendship treaty now today what has happened it it has become very unequal and mostly india uh, is imposing a lot of things it means india is uh, like it's kind of a big brother attitude so equality is not there okay what was initially the motto now china's intervention we all know ki uh, nepal has been a part of the bri that is the belt and road initiative of china and china is interfering uh, nepal uh, 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 main main uh, motto of china is to have that hegemony in southeast asia now coming to the kalapani borders now now this is this is the this is the place kalapani okay the uttarakhand border this is the place now what has happened here is kalapani is a valley that is administered by india as a part of the pitharala district of uttarakhand okay it is situated on the kailas mansarovar route now here there is a river called kali river there is a river called kali river it demarcates the border between india and nepal now here we also need to know we need to go to modern history topic so there is a treaty called treaty of sugoli it is very important treaty from you have to cover it in modern history now it was signed between the kingdom of nepal at that point of time and the british india so at that point of time nepal was different british india was different so both these um, like british india and nepal they signed a treaty after the anglo nepal is were in 1816 located the kali river as nepal's western boundary within india this treaty located this river as nepal's western boundary now in comment box you have to write who was the governor general 
when treaty of sir oliver signed who was the governor general during this time when the treaty of sir oliver signed you can mention the answer in the comment box okay the discrepancy in locating the source of kali river led to boundary disputes between india and nepal and each country producing maps supporting their own claims now this the treaty of sagoli was the main bone of contention in today's time okay now from geography point of view you, you should know ki the kali river is known as sharda river or the kali ganga in the uttarakhand it is known as sharda river very famous river now it jo kali river joins the ghagra river in uttar pradesh which is a tributary of ganga now some river projects of kali river tanakpur hydroelectric project chamelia hydroelectric project and sharda barrage so that's all uh, for uh, uh, this uh, week current affairs of ir topic and uh, stay tuned for other courses of current affairs from different faculties thank you